Hello and welcome back to another lecture. In this lecture, we are going to look at how we can eliminate a single point of failure with our NAT gateway. This is our architecture. We have two availability zones and we have our NAT gateway in one of those availability zones. And that NAT gateway is serving the private subnet in each availability zone. This architecture works, but the disadvantage to it is if the availability zone where our NAT gateway is in was to go down, then the private subnet in the second availability zone would not have access to the internet and our application would not be available. So to solve this problem, we need to create another NAT gateway in the second availability zone. Then instances in the private subnet within the availability zone will route traffic through that NAT gateway to the internet. And having an architecture like this helps us create high availability. So if one of these availability zones was to go down, the other instance in the second availability zone will still have access to the internet. So let's see how we can do that in the management console. In the management console, we are going to create another NAT gateway. So let's select services. I'm going to come down to network and content delivery. I'm going to select VPC. Then on the left side, I'm going to select Elastic IP. I'm going to allocate another Elastic IP. I'm going to leave the settings as default and click Allocate. And once we have allocated our Elastic IP, on the left side, select NAT Gateways. And we are going to create NAT Gateway. Let's give it a name. I'm going to call it NAT Gateway Public Subnet 2. Then I'm going to select the subnet. I'll click on this drop down. And I want to put it in the public subnet 2 in the Jupyter VPC. It is right here. I'll select it. Then I'm going to allocate my elastic IP. And it is this elastic IP. I'll select that. Then we are going to click Create NAT Gateway. And it is now creating the NAT gateway. Let's wait for the state to be available. Then we are going to edit the route tables for our private subnet. My NAT gateway is now available. On the left side, before I select my route table, I'm going to filter this by my Jupyter VPC to make it easy. Then once I select my Jupyter VPC, then I'm going to select my route tables. We have one private route table here. I'm going to rename this route table just to make things clear. And I'm going to call this private route table one. Then I'm going to create route table. I'll call it private route table two. Then I'm going to select my VPC. I'll select this drop down and I'll put it in the Jupyter VPC. Then I'll click create. And I'm going to close. We now have two private route tables, but this first private route table, I didn't edit it correctly. So I'm going to click that pencil, I'm going to add one. And instead of clicking out, I'm going to click this check. So we now have private route table one and private route table two. For the private route table two we just created, let's edit the route. We are going to select route, edit route. We are going to add a new route from anywhere and we are going to route it through the NAT gateway and we want to route it through the NAT gateway public subnet 2 and click save route and close. So the last thing we need to do is associate the private subnet in the second availability zone to our private route table 2. So I'm going to select subnet associations. I'm still selecting the private route table 2. Select subnet association, edit subnet association. And in here, I'm going to select my, I can move this out so you can see. I'm going to select my private subnet too and click save. And we have now associated the private subnet too in the second availability zone to the private route table too. So from now on, the instances in the private subnet 2 will be accessing the internet through the NAT gateway in the public subnet 2. And this is how you design a highly available and fault tolerant NAT gateway architecture. 
Thank you, and I'll see you in the next lecture. Bye.